Around the nation, smash and grab crimes are on the rise. Just this weekend, brazen thieves in Westchester, New York, were caught on camera stealing luxury handbags from a Louis Vuitton store. Listen to what New York gubernatorial candidate Rob Astorino had to say about the incident earlier today. And people were worried, you know, so they're finally, I think, waking up in different parts of, hey, it's not just in New York City or everywhere else. It's right in my own backyard. And people like Governor H Kathy Hochul is completely to blame for something like this. You know, the week that we buried, and I was at St. Patrick's Cathedral, the two officers, Rivera and Mora, th she stood outside and said that she is going to stand by her no cash bail law, which has been utterly disastrous. And it's a reason why thugs like this do that, because they don't fear any repercussions. Let's welcome to the show Texas Congressman Troy Nels. Congressman, good to see you. Hello, Jackie. It's good to be with you. Let me ask you this. What you just saw, only one example of a smash and grab crime that we've seen in major cities um, that are soft on crime, that is, and that's across the United States. Chicago has been the site of a rash of high-end burglaries. Two masked men hit a luxury car dealership, looted the place, stole high-end watches as well. A Burberry store was reportedly also targeted that day. By the way, Mayor Lori Lightfoot blamed retailers for not doing a good enough job to make safety their priority. Last week, crooks here in New York City targeting a Celine boutique. Police said they made off with nearly $50,000 worth of merchandise. Washington, D.C. also seen a string of these smash and grabs um, at eyeglass stores. Congressman, your reaction to everything that we're seeing and um, essentially, you know, citizens across the country are concerned about this. They're concerned about their safety as well. How can we fix this? And, and this just didn't start last week or last month. This started a couple years ago, and it really goes back to, to George Floyd, right, and defund the police movement. So you've seen the left and, and this administration talking about defunding the police. Many large cities across our country have done so, and this is what you get. You get rampant crime, not only property crime, you've seen an increase in, in auto theft, but also the violent crime, the robberies and the homicides. Homicides are up in the 12 largest cities in America and, and they're record high. So we have to do something about this. I think it's Congress's responsibility to, to help secure and, and the the American people and help keep them safe. So I've enacted legislation. Uh, hopefully we can get it through the House that uh, it's the uh, Public Safety en uh, Enhancement Act and, and it adds 100,000 officers to our nation's streets. They did it in 94, Jackie, in the crime bill. We should be able to do it today. Yeah, and earlier in this segment, we heard former Westchester County Executive um, and Republican gubernatorial candidate Rob Astorino talk about the two officers that were killed here in New York City. Um, tonight, a report coming in finding that more cops have been killed under the Biden administration than in previous years. And, and I wonder, I'm guessing the answer to this question is no, but are you surprised? Um, and how does legislation like yours help remedy this? Because I think it's something that people uh, pretty much want to see in their states across the country, too. Well, law enforcement, uh, they don't feel appreciated today. I did it for eight years. I was a county sheriff in Fort Bend County, Texas for eight years. And, and law enforcement just doesn't feel appreciated because of all the rhetoric, the anti-police rhetoric, the defund the police movement. So now is the time. I believe now is the appropriate time for Congress to come together, both sides of the aisle, and look at my legislation. It adds 100,000 officers to our nation's streets over the next five years. It was done in 1994 under the crime bill in 94 when Bill Clinton was the president. And guess who the author of this bill was on the Senate side? It was Joe Biden. Yeah. So Joe Biden supported this in 94. Why can't we do this now? I, I sent a letter to every all 435 members saying, we owe this to the American people. If we're truly worried about our nation's streets and the violent crime that we're seeing, here is an opportunity. Criminal justice reform, President Biden, you talk about it often. Here's an opportunity. Now let's get it done. The American people deserve to feel safe in their, their communities. It is a huge opportunity, not one that I think this administration might pounce on. We'll have to see. But having said that, you know, um, I see it here in New York City all the time. It's not just putting the streets on, uh, police on the streets, as you're talking about. That's the first step, very important. It's also empowering them to do their jobs. Right now, you walk up to an officer and you say that you saw something across the the street. I literally did this last week and he looked up kind of like, well, what do you want me to do about it? Um, very scary for residents. Troy Nels, Congressman, good to see you. Thank you.